so five are gone <clears throat> five of the half uh, four heifers one bull calf is gone and i'm left with a uh, nine adult head which is basically um Six, eight, no, 10 adult head, I'm sorry. Yeah, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, which is nine cows, one bull. Uh, should have been 10 cows, but one died, so. And uh, these are the, the adults. And somewhere out there are the little calves. I think they already, they already went back there. Oh, there they are. So I got five little calves here. Three of them are here. I don't know where the other two are somewhere so that should alleviate the situation here at the farm with regards to feeding hay uh, they were going through three bales per <clears throat> per week so hopefully it goes down to about two uh, so I'm, I'm going to go see how well they they ate the last roll i put out here so i put two rolls last week i'm gonna go check them out and uh probably open up a two new bales today and as soon as i do this this week i'm gonna start looking for a hay seller to get me about 10 or 12 more bales so what the hell is this i see some road tracks here oh that's the, the buyer so yeah so the buyer so the way the way i work it out I got, the buyer comes into here it's time to go around here if we get some rain he came in and kind of backed into the loading gate so the way the way I I work out these sales, they're going to the barn sale, but I don't have a trailer. A new trailer will cost me about six thousand dollars, and I really don't have that many cows to justify the expense. So I had been borrowing a trailer uh, actually from my boss, and uh, he had offered me he he had offered. Uh, the trailer to me to to take the cows to market but i, I don't want to i don't I, I don't want to uh encroach on his hospitality and his kindness so <clears throat> uh i borrowed it a couple times and that's it uh no i called the, the barn sale uh, or, the, or the barn place and uh, i spoke to the owner a couple times and he said well i got a guy that uh, will bring your cows to to, to sale for about three dollars a mile and i'm only 25 miles away from the barn sale so I mean, that's that's 75 dollars and they added a little extra charge it's all oh no, it's 100 bucks to take a trailer either one calf or or 20 however many you put in there they'll they'll uh, take that many for 100 dollars which is an excellent deal in my opinion <clears throat> because i'm only selling calves twice a year so if i spend 250 dollars let's just say a year on transportation of calves to, to market that's not a bad deal at all compared to having to pay six thousand dollars on a new trailer and then they have to deal with the tags and this and that you see how expenses start to pile up i mean small operations like mine i mean uh, you barely break even you barely break even. I mean, if I've said it many times, the the value in this whole mix here, it's not the cows, <laughs> because I, I, I'm breaking even the best. I'm thinking, I haven't done the math on it, but after all this hay expenses I had this year, I'm breaking even. So the value in, in, in an operation like this is, for me at least, has been the the land appreciation right uh, I got this property on 2016 it's gone up in value about five times since then I mean I don't know what happened but it, right after COVID things just skyrocketed and then it went up in value now plus you see the highway right there that's a two that's a four lane highway two in two out that's a very so this this farm has 700 yards of frontage road, so that adds to its value, right? And uh, since it's ag exempt, taxes are marginal. And really, I'm paying like 320 dollars a year on taxes, and that's it. So 
the cows to make sure that I keep that this property stays egg exempt, right? So I got to kind of keep cows to to keep the land egg exempt. Now there's a lot of junk in these pastures. Ah oh, man, a piece of rod or something. Now to be truthful, uh, I only have to keep cows. I think two out of five years right so i could really sell the cows close the pasture for four years bring more cows in and open it up avoid myself a lot of expenses of, of traveling to the farm and you know buying hay and all this stuff but then all this thing would get overgrown with crap and you know an empty property deteriorates it tends to go wild again right so all this stuff here that you see right now was nothing but cedars like that. So that, all that was bulldozers, there's some brush piles over there that haven't burned, there's more brush piles on that side. Uh, so all that would immediately start reverting to, to its natural state if I left it alone. And besides, I like coming out here. I love coming out here, right? So that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna keep burning cows here. But that's the way this operation works, at least in my books. Maybe if I lived here, I could make it a little more profitable because I would be saving the gas coming here every every week then, every weekend. So here it is, see? They didn't leave anything, no waste whatsoever. Look at this. This time it was even better. No waste of any hay. So, going back to, to the whole farm, how do you make it profitable? Uh, I mean, uh, to me, the value is, is in the land itself. Uh, and I don't plan on selling it, but it's still going up in value. And uh, and the taxes aren't going up in value that much. So I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Whether the cows make money or not, eh, just, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I think I make enough money out of the cows to do the 12 mortgage payments on it free and clear and uh, that's about what maybe ten thousand dollars a year in, in cow sales that's not bad but still I, i'm pretty sure i got all the crap that i picked up still i'm uh, i'm uh, i'm at best breaking even if i if i put into account the hay cost the uh the cost of uh, my time everything right the wear and tear of my vehicle the tractor expense that i had that i had to buy a tractor uh, i've had to buy equipment things like that right so all those expenses uh i mean like i said i'm probably breaking even at some point the the good part about it is that every expense for this farm goes against my income and i'd rather see it go go towards the farm versus go towards Uncle Sam and, and some war that it chooses to fight somewhere right so that's the other the other part about, about it that it's a it's a it's a big tax write-off a huge tax write-off and uh, that's a uh, that's pretty much in a nutshell what this the numbers boil down to I mean I know a lot of people do a lot of a lot of more complicated numbers and uh, they keep a lot more accurate records and this and that. I'm ballparking it here. I mean, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm that far off. Today was the second time I sold cows. The first one was in August. I sold five back then, and these five that I sold are from these from this herd that you see right there. Those five cows that you see, those five red cows, they all came with the calf on the side. And uh, those calves were kind of real, real, real skinny and uh, smallish. And, and they got here the first week of August after, what, first week of August, first week of January, that's what, five months. Uh, they put on some weight, they put on some the growth, growth and weight. So it was time for them to go. So they went. And uh, so, in, so in five months, I got about 60% back, or I will get, depending on how the market closes today, the, 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 the sales, the, the sale barn closes today. I'm getting about 60% of my investment in those five cows right there, with those calves in five months. And one of those cows already dropped the calf. She, she dropped the calf in early October. So that's a bonus, right? 
and the other ones they're going to be dropping casts from here till may or something like that i mean i wouldn't be surprised if in the next two months i get a couple more of the pop because they were all running around with the bull and they already had calves that were four or five months old on their side so they're, they're, they're pretty much i think they got bred if not your mama's boy got them got them bred uh so pretty much any cow that by next june july at the latest doesn't drop a calf it's gonna go to the barn the barn sale but i'm sure they, they, they're all gonna drop calves because they all had calves on their side they're not like you know cows that were no good uh so that's that's one way one way to to get back your investment a little faster i started off with heifers back in 2020 five heifers uh if somebody's starting off with an operation like this i would suggest that you don't want to start off with heifers start off with cow calf pairs because that that calf on the side of the cow is gonna pay for half of your your investment the calves made up for it right the five months later i'm, I'm getting back about 60 percent of my investment and uh and the, i still have the cows the cows are in good body condition now and they're gonna be dropping calves in, a, in the next three or four months i think so by the end of uh this year i should have about nine calves ready to go to market again so that's how that works i mean and it's a little a little cash flow right a little a little a little money just to go pay pay for maybe a vacation or something or go pay the the taxes or whatever you gotta pay right <laughs> like i said the, the the real investment for me here is not the cows it's just the property the property has appreciated tremendously and uh in this location i would not have a, a problem selling it um the market has cooled off a little bit but uh i, I don't care because i don't, don't want to sell the property right but uh, if i had tried selling this thing i was getting calls from realtors telling me hey you you know we, we, we know you're the owner of this property on this location would you be interested in selling it i mean I, I, that's how, how desperate these guys were back in 21 22 early 22 even, even late 22. now the, with the with the rates going up so much it's cooled off a little bit and probably prices are going to go down and that's good because i want to buy that other side of the 40 acres that my neighbor has on that side uh, he won't sell <laughs> but anyway uh, that's how this, this this little ranching business works smart guys actually lease the properties they never buy the land they just they just lease <laughs> they just lease the properties and run it and you know there's a lot of land here that that uh, is just growing cedars like that right and and, and the owners are, are out of out of uh, exemption so they're paying full taxes on it you approach one of those guys and you tell them, hey, I'll carry the land for you. And uh, in five years, you're going to be like exempt. So you give you a 10 year lease on this property. And hell, they'll, they'll probably give it to you for free. Or for dollars on the penny, right? Just because they want the property to be maintained. They don't want to have the, the taxes, everything. Uh, it's just a matter of looking for those properties and having the time to do that, you know? I'm, I'm spread pretty thin. I mean, I basically, I'm here on a Wednesday. We had to sell these cows, so I basically took a day off from work. But otherwise, I'm mostly here on Saturdays. So, but if you lived out here in the country, you could very easily get yourself three to four hundred acres under management that are not yours and run cows, cows through there. And at that point, you start making a, 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 a livable wage. I, I, mean, I don't see why out of 400 acres you couldn't make maybe sixty thousand dollars a year maybe uh and that's a pretty good living uh and especially if you got a, an eight to five on the side that's not a bad living but uh what i do is just a hobby anyway folks until next time i'll talk to you later